In 2009, along the west branch of the Acebo River near Lake Placid, Larry and Nancy Master bought 135 acres. Their vision? To turn it into a wildlife sanctuary and a field station for the study of biodiversity and climate change. This valley and the farm down the road was called Intervale. In fact, there's still a sign on the barn down the road called, uh, it's called Intervale Farm. I like the name Intervale Farm, but we're really not a farm. But we are sort of in the Intervale Valley, and I love the name Intervale. So I, uh, we went around for about a year about what to call this place. One of the questions we had was, was how to manage it. And the previous owner's caretaker mowed the grass. All the open fields were mowed every week. So it was kind of a lawn with no biodiversity, no living things really using it at all. And uh, the big field was just a monoculture of perennial ryegrass. No butterflies, no birds, no anything using it. So what we did is we took the two biggest fields that were like that, and we plowed all that perennial non-native European grasses under, and we planted a, a native grass mix as well as some native wildflowers. And those took really well. And after three years, the fields are full of butterflies and full of birds, and uh, it's just remarkable. The trails were all here, I'm happy to say. I don't think, we, we haven't made any new trails. We do maintain them. And actually they were in poor shape when we bought the property. So we bought a native uh, grass mix from Ernst Seeds in Pennsylvania, which supplies native grasses throughout the Northeast. And uh, we've reclaimed the trails, we've graded them a little bit and planted these, these uh, warm season native grasses. And it's a trail mix and uh, they've done really well. We rarely ever have to mow the trail, maybe once a year. We're trying to identify all the species that occur here, from big mammals to paramecium and small things. And, uh, and so we've tried to find scientists to help us do this. We can't do it ourselves alone. We can identify a lot of the things, you know, the birds and the mammals and the vertebrates, but we need help with the, a lot of the invertebrates and the insects. And so we found people that can help us. And we posted a bio blitz out here, which is a, a you know, 24 hour effort, bringing in naturalists and scientists and and, and, and just local amateurs and, and students to see how many species we identify in one day on the preserve. And we're up to over a thousand species now on the whole list. My favorite thing so far is I've been encouraging local school groups to use it as an outdoor laboratory. So the Lake Placid High School AP Biology class comes out here a couple of times a year to do classroom exercises, uh, looking, for example, at the health of the river by examining the aquatic insects that are in the river, putting out boards for salamanders and seeing what's coming and in different types of habitat. Uh, but perhaps the, the neatest thing is the whole entire sixth grade class now has come two years in a row. I think, I'm hoping they'll keep coming. I think they will for an entire day in early June. And we've set up six stations for them, one with mammals, birds, amphibians, insects, aquatic life, and plants. And kids rotate in sort of 10 person groups amongst these stations for, they stay at each one for about 50 minutes and learn about the mammals of the Adirondacks or amphibians of the Adirondacks. And we often have live specimens to show them. And I think they go away really excited about these things. It's just wonderful to see the, their eyes light up. <laughs> My current plans um, are to turn this uh, into a nature center when we die, give it to a nonprofit to run. Perhaps you know, several non small nonprofits could have their offices out here, much like it's gonna happen, I think, at Heaven Hill Farm. Then we'd leave it with an endowment so it could have a full-time caretaker and maintain the place and so on and so forth. So I, that's what I'd like to see happen. But the goal is that is to sort of get a baseline of what's really here. And from that, we'll pick what we want to monitor that might be indicators of a changing climate or changes in the landscape and so on. And we anticipate there will be changes and we'd like to know what those are. And the whole ecosystem will change, of course, as plant species change and the ecological communities will change over time. So we want to start documenting that. It doesn't do any good if you just do this for a couple of years. In terms of monitoring especially, it has to be a long-term project. You, you want to do this for decades, really, ideally. As fall gives way to the long Adirondack winter, in winter to spring and summer, the work at Intervale Lowlands continues. Meanwhile, day by day, the property grows wilder, more inviting to wildlife, and ever more worthy of study and celebration. Mm -hmm.